All right, in this video, I want to show you one more example. I'm going to do example number three, where the discriminant is a non-perfect square. And then after this example, I'm going to have you try number two on your own, where the discriminant is negative. And then raise your hand when you've done this so that I can come check your work to make sure you're ready to go on to work through the uh, homework objective to obtain mastery in that section. Um, before this, I have done number one in a different video, so if you haven't watched that yet, please go back and watch that on how to use the quadratic formula when solving by factoring as an option so that you can solve any quadratic function. So if you haven't watched that video, please go back and do so. I'm going to go through this pretty quickly because I've already explained how to do this in the first example. So, but what I want to get to is to show you the difference that exists in step four, five, and six as compared to what step four, five, and six looked like in the first video. Because it will look different in this example, number three, and it will also look different in example two. So, first step is to put it in standard form. I add 10n, I subtract 1, add 10n, subtract 1. So now I have 4n squared plus 10n minus 1 equals 0. Good. Second step, identify a, b, and c. My a term is 4, my b term is positive 10, my c term is negative 1. My third step is to put all of this into the quadratic formula. It is opposite b, so instead of a positive 10, it will be negative 10 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 10 squared, please put it in parentheses, minus 4 times my a times my c. I'm sorry, I'm going to replace a and c with numbers. My a is 4, my c is also negative 1 in this case. And this is all over 2 times my a, which is 4. Step 3 is complete. Steps 1, 2, and 3 are the exact same no matter what quadratic equation you're solving. This is when things start to get a little bit different. Step 4, I'm going to simplify the discriminant that exists underneath the radical and then rewrite everything as it was. So step 4, this breaks down to 1 16. So I need to rewrite that then. And if you notice, this is the big difference in question number one, when I did step four, the discriminant was a perfect square. So it broke down to whole numbers. This will not break down to whole numbers. So let me rewrite everything with my new simplified discriminant underneath the radical, negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 1 16 all over two times four is eight, that math. Now, in this case, I need to actually break this down into simple, simplest radical terms. Whereas before, perfect square, you just take the square root on your calculator, breaks down to a whole number. This one does not, because it is not a perfect square. It would give me a decimal if I took the square root of that. So, to break this down, I know that 116 is even, so it divides by 2. 116 divided by 2 is 58. So again, this confuses people. 2 times 58 brings me back to 116, so I know that their factors are 116. Now, 2 is a prime number, but I have to continue with 58 to get it to its prime factorization as well. 58 is also an even number, so I know that it is divided by 2. 58 divided by 2 is 29. Now, 29 is a prime number, and so are my 2s. At this point, I look for pairs. I have a pair of 2s that I know can come up out of the radical. So, out of the radical come the 2s, inside the radical stays the 29. So I have just completed step 5. Step 4 was simplify the discriminant and rewrite the formula with the new radical. Step 5 was simplify the radical if necessary. I just simplified it. So now I'm going to rewrite my new quadratic formula with my new simplified radical. Negative 10 plus or minus 2 times the radical of 29 all over 8. Now in this case, um, at this point step 6 says simplify the expression if necessary. What that means is, and before I even continue this with this, I just want to hit on the difference here that exists, this piece. Before it was 
this piece was a whole number, so I could do math that I could actually solve for two whole numbers. This will not give me two whole number solutions that are pretty. These are going to be two real solutions, but they're irrational because I couldn't break down that radical any further. And so to finalize this answer, I have to now consider, can I simplify my expression in step five any further? And my expression in step five have three whole numbers, a negative 10, a two, and an eight. They are all even. So I know that they can all be reduced by a factor of two. So I can decide that I can divide all of these numbers by two. So negative 10 divided by two is a negative five plus or minus 2 divided by my 2 is 1. The square root of 29 can't be simplified any further, and this is all over 8 divided by 2 is 4. So I have two answers. This can also be rewritten as negative 5 plus the square root of 29 over 4, and negative 5 minus the square root of 29 over 4. Two different ways you would see it, but all of these, or you could write it just negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 29 over 4. All of these can be my answers. And so step 6 exists sometimes that you might have to simplify, but only if they can all be reduced, all of the whole numbers. If not, then you just leave step 5 as is. So go ahead again and try example 2 on your own, and raise your hand when you're done. In this example, you're going to encounter the discriminant to be a negative. So you might still have to break down the radical like I did over here. But remember, when you're taking the square root of a negative, you need to include an i in your final answer to tell me you're venturing into the realm of imaginary numbers.